I do invite you to join me in a word of prayer. Gracious God and Lord, as we have gathered here this day, we gather around your word, we center our lives in Christ, your spirit rests upon us. May all these things, Lord, draw us ever closer to you, even as you have drawn near to us in the gospel message of Jesus. We ask this in his name. Amen. You know, I have a question that I'm going to start with, but I'm honestly I'm a little hesitant to ask it because after all, you're sitting in church and I'm, I'm sure now that you've heard God's word, we've sung some hymns that you're just all calm and relaxed. And, but I'm going to ask the question anyway. Are any of you stressed about anything? Anybody got stress in their life? Anybody? Two people have stress in their life. Well, I do. I know I got a role. I got I got college students sitting out here. I know y'all got stress in your lives. You know, I think about that. And you know, this past week I was at the uh, district pastors conference, and at every conference, this one vendor that sets up a table always has things. We you know we used to call them stress balls, right? You know those things I'm talking about. But now they come in different shapes and forms, and and I always wonder about why they have these stress ball things with a bunch of pastors. I'm stress-free, baby. Okay, I shouldn't lie in church, right? But the interesting thing is that is the shapes these take. This, at this past conference, there was one that had the shape of a man with a little smiley face on it. And so you take this nice little man with a smiley face and you crush this dude, right? And I'm thinking, I feel bad about breathing stress this way. I feel like I am hurting somebody, right? And the one they had before at another conference was in the shape of a heart. It just doesn't seem to stress, to relieve stress, by crushing somebody's heart. And so by the very nature of getting these things that are supposed to relieve stress, I'm feeling kind of stressed just by doing this. Right? But isn't that the way it is? You know, we get stressed and, and people deal with stress in many different kinds of ways. You know, sometimes people start dealing with stress and they, maybe they, they start eating a lot more. You know, I'm stressed and so I'm gonna, I'm gonna eat more. Well, what does that do? It, it makes your body unhealthy, right? And then you're more stressed and then sometimes people, you know, they say, well, I'm not gonna eat so much. I just don't feel like eating. I'm so stressed. What does that do? It makes your body unhealthy so you get more stressed. Some people think, I'm going to deal with my stress, I'm going to go down, I'm going to buy something that's going to bring me some joy and happiness in my life, and then they get the credit card bill, and what are they? They're more stressed because they have more debt. Do you ever feel that way? Like stress just goes boom, 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 it just won't stop? I'm a Christian man. And I'm not free from stress. The thing I've learned in life is when I find myself just getting there, instead of doing this, you take time to do this. And you take that stress and you take those things to the Lord, there's a difference. And I wonder sometimes what, what people that do not have Jesus in their lives do with all of that stress and distress in life. I may have explained some of those things already, right? You squeeze these things or maybe you eat more or eat less or buy more and just, it just keeps compounding. And I, and I wonder sometimes what do people do if they don't have the Lord Jesus in their lives? Then I think about myself, and I, I don't know, I may step on some toes here today, and the people here, if we're really truly honest with ourselves, is turning to the Lord always the first thing that we do? Or we try to figure out something else in our own mind, something else in our own rationalism, in our, in our own sphere of our world, something else that we can do to help reduce that stress in our lives. You know, I looked at Scripture like Romans 3, things like Romans 3 and other of Paul's writing, well, the whole of Scripture, I see always a bunch of stressed people. 
particularly those that were maybe coming new to the faith and they get bombarded, especially in Paul's time, new Gentiles coming into the faith and they're getting bombarded with the, with the Jewish influence from outside that's, that they're learning that, you know, they've been saved by faith, but the Jewish influence outside is going, well, this faith is one thing, but you've got to add something else on that. You've got to keep all of Moses' laws. You've got to be circumcised. You've got to have all these other things happen. Otherwise, you're not really a Christian. Do you think that was stressful on this early church? Sure it was. Trying to keep the law to, to be right with God, I can't imagine anything more stressful than that. So we have Paul writing to the Romans, the righteousness of God has been manifested apart from the law. Although the law and the prophets bear witness to it, the righteousness of God through faith in Christ Jesus for all who believe. Right? The righteousness of God is there through faith for all who believe. It is true. We've all sinned and fallen part of the glory of God, but we're justified by His grace as a gift. And he goes on, then what becomes of our boasting? It is excluded. By what kind of law? By law of works? No, but by the law of faith. For we hold that one is justified by faith apart from works of the law. Whew. Because we can never do it ourselves. We can never do enough, earn enough, make enough, make all the right decisions ourselves to be right with God. That, if that is not right in our lives, if we do not have that grace living inside of us, that grace that alone can come in and tell us and remind us that God is in control of our lives through the Lord Jesus Christ who gave Himself on the cross, who raised from the dead, who sits at the right hand of God, who promised to be with us always to the very end of the age. If we do not have that right, and I would say we're the most stressed people in the world. I love it. Paul writing about the resurrection in 1 Corinthians 15 says if there's no resurrection, we of all people are to be most pitied. And I would say without that center and foundation of Christ in our lives, we would be most pitied. Not only in our salvation, but in the way we try to live out our lives. Trying to do it ourselves instead of first calling but going, God, the epistle James writes, draw near to God. He will draw near to you. We hold that justified by faith apart from works of the law. We hold that in baptismal waters of water and word following the command of Jesus that we are made his children. We hold that. We hold that Christ has made us more than conquerors in this world over Satan and over everything else. On Reformation Day, <laughs> you know, you have to, you know, brain has to think some about Martin Luther, you know, the guy. Let's go nail 95 theses on a castle church door and the rest of my life is going to be turmoil. <laughs> think Luther was stressed? Think he had any stress in his life? Bucking against the whole church as it was known in the world at that time? Being excommunicated from the church, being hidden in a castle so that he would not be killed? <laughs> I think he had some stress in his life. But listen to what Luther wrote. Even if we were greatly concerned and worried, we are, after all, unable to achieve anything with our useless fretting. Nay, we plague and torment ourselves and in this way only make matters worse. God wants us to know him as our God and Father in Christ, to call upon Him in all our troubles and to have the firm confidence in Him who cares for you. So St. Peter cites Psalm 55, 22, cast all your care upon Him, for He cares for you. We hold that Christ is our Lord and Savior. We hold that our sins are forgiven through the death and resurrection of Jesus. We hold that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God. We hold that God who is in us is stronger than he who is in the world. We hold that the word of truth, as Jesus has so told us, the truth frees us from sin, from stress, from distress. In Psalm 46, we had that as a part of our reading 
Psalm 46 is a psalm upon which a mighty fortress is based. We're going to sing that at the end of the service today. The psalmist is writing about the nations trying to rise up against God, nations trying to rise up against his people. And God says, be still and know that I am God. Be still and know that I am God. I am the God of your salvation, Jesus, right? Dietrich Bonhoeffer, German Lutheran pastor, prisoner because of resistance to, to Nazism in, in Germany, who was, who t- uh, they took his life because of his stance against that. Bonhoeffer wrote this quote, We must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. your life need to be interrupted by God to the point where you just go, 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 go. You build the stress more and more and more. We must be ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God, to allow his word to speak to us again, a word of peace, a reminder of his love. A reminder of the salvation that He alone can give us. A reminder that He will walk with us every step of the way in our lives. Now, I'm not foolish. I, I, I know it would be hard to absolutely dismiss every bit of stress out of your life. But we do have a promise, don't we, from Scripture? That God will work all things to good to them that know and love the Lord. We do have that promise. So maybe in our lives when we remember and we're kind of reaching these things and we're going, ah, it's time to put them down. And go, Lord, shall we pray? Lord God, our Heavenly Father, you have relieved us from the debt and load of our sin. You have called us as your children. You have given us the truth of your word in Jesus that has set us free. Lord, yet there are so many things in this life that just want to crush us. Lord, we know because Jesus has crushed Satan. Because he has called us as his own people. That you can take away stress. You can take away distress. You can replace that with peace and joy in our lives. And so, Lord, today we pray as we take this moment today to hear again your word. We take this moment again to say, Lord, take these things from our lives. We may live at peace in the joy of our salvation. We pray this in the holy name of Jesus. Amen. I'm going to invite you to stand as we continue with the prayers of the church.